Bull Prowse. So I just picked up this little atomic clock. And when I was in the store, I was reading on the AC adapter that it, it puts out five volts, 1.5 amps. And so instead of plugging this into my inverter and keeping my inverter on all day long, I can instead plug this directly into a USB adapter because USB gives off five volts. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this apart. I'm gonna teach you step by step everything you need to know on how to power something that should be powered by AC, but instead with a USB. This doesn't work for all things. Most things are gonna be 12 volts when you take them apart and wire it directly. But this one's five volts, so this works with USB. The next thing that we also have to get right is the amperage. So on the output of this, it says 1.5 amps on the wall board itself. So that means whatever USB receptacle that we plug this in, to needs to be able to give off 1.5 amps. Most of them only give off one amp. I have a whole charge strip that gives off two amps for each one, so that's okay. The next thing that we need to get right is the polarity of the wires that are connecting it. So positive and negative wire need to be perfect. If, if you switch those, this does not have reverse polarity protection and it will go up in smoke. So those are the three things. We need the voltage right, we need the amperage right, and then we need the polarity right. Polarity is the most important thing. Voltage is gonna be second, and amperage is gonna be third. Voltage and polarity you have to get right no matter what, but there is more leniency with um, the amperage and also the voltage, but polarity you have to get it right. It's all or nothing. So we're gonna rip this thing apart and we're gonna make this work with USB instead of an AC outlet plug. Damn, this thing is really nice. I only bought it at Goodwill for $12 and um, really high quality. I mean, it's brand new and I know these things cost a lot more, but I'm pretty stoked. All right, guys, so we have two little important things that we need to look at. Where you plug it in, it says five volts and then it tells you the polarity of the plug. It says that the outside prong is negative and the inside prong is positive. And so that means that this the outside piece of metal is negative and the inside is positive. But you need to check right here to make sure that it has that. Not all of them have that. So we're gonna go over the method of figuring out the polarity without having this handy dandy little thing because not all of them have it. And for those of you guys that don't know, um, on any kind of wall adapter, you're going to have this little label right here. And it will say the voltage and the amperage. And th you need to look at only the output of the wall ward, not the input, because that's that doesn't matter to you. You need to know the DC. All right, so what we wanna do is we wanna replace this with the USB cord. So that means we need to cut this. And this is kind of scary if it's your first time doing such a thing. But what you wanna do is cut just one wire. So now that we have one wire, we can do the same on the other side. And now what you want to do is mark these, okay? Because we know that these two connect. So we need to make sure that we know which one is which. We'll learn about why in a second. It's for polarity, but there's a way to check it later on. And now that I have these two labeled, because I know they're gonna connect, then I can snip this one right here, okay? So now we have what we need to connect to the USB plug and then this. But you'll notice even though I marked it, it's already marked for me. Not all of them are marked though. If you have black wires, you might have to feel it. Some of them have striated edges or whatnot in, in little marks depicting which one is which, but not all of them do. And some it will be only for part of the wire, not the whole entire wire. So for this one, we have black lines. And so when I hook up the voltmeter, we're gonna figure out what the black lines mean, whether it's ground or not. What we want to do to be able to access these wires so we can test them is, you know, strip them with a little wire stripper. After you strip the wires, now we have these two. And so that means that we can test these to see what's going on and we can see how much voltage this is putting off. So if I plug this into a wall and I'm very careful not to let these two wires touch, I can hook a multimeter up to it and we can figure out the voltage. So what we need to do is we need to figure out the voltage and the polarity coming out of this AC adapter. So make sure that the wires are not touching each other, plug it into an AC adapter, do not do this with high voltages, this is a very low voltage DC. Make sure you know you check the little label. And what you want to do is you want to put a multimeter on the voltage rating. And so right now what we can do is we can hook the red onto any wire and then the black on the other wire. And look it, we have five volts. That means it'll work perfectly with the USB thing. And it's good just to check 
okay? And then also what we can notice is that there is no negative sign in front of it. If I were to reverse this, what would happen is that it would show me a different polarity. See how it's a negative five? That means that these are not on their proper spots. That means that the black is the red and the red is the black. So you have to put it back onto wherever it was. But just for example, you can see that when there's a negative, that means that there's reverse polarity. When I put red on the knotted one and black on this one, we get the solid five. So that means that this is true polarity. That means that the red one is the knot. So that means that on our plug, the knot is the red or the positive. And we need to know that, especially if your wires are not labeled, you need to know which one is positive and which one is negative. So use the power adapter to figure out what polarity the knot is. And in this one, it's positive. And then go over here, and that means that whenever you hook this up to the USB adapter, this is gonna be the positive one. So let's say you do not wanna plug in the AC adapter, and you don't wanna mess with that, and you don't know how to use a voltmeter. You can use a multimeter instead just to do resistance, and that might be easier for some of you guys. On this, there's a label, and it says that the outside of the plug is negative, and the inside of the plug is positive. And you can see a positive sign and a negative, and it has a C that, mean, that depicts the negative, and then the positive has a line going to the center. So that means on this little plug, the outside piece of metal is negative and the inside is positive. So what we're going to do is we're gonna put a multimeter on resistance, okay, and that, um, it just, it's depicted by the ohm sign. And then when you put the two leads together, you'll get a zero. That means zero resistance between these two leads. So that means if we put one of these leads on the outside, and then I put it on either one of these, it will only give me a zero when it's on the negative because I have it on the negative of the plug. So when I hook it up over here, we get a zero. That means that the outside of this plug, negative, is the negative right here. And that makes this one positive. And that's a really easy way to do it. You can also, if it's, this one's really small though, you can stick this inside and then hook this onto the positive. Let's see if it will go. No, it's too tiny. Usually if you have a bigger plug and you can actually stick one of these inside of here, then you can hook up and see if there's zero resistance on the positive lead side. But so that's a, another way that you can figure out the polarity. Now that we know that this is positive and this is negative, we can finally attach it to a USB that's five volts. So now I have a USB cable that I'm going to attach directly to this. But what we need to do is we need to splice it in with the proper polarity. And we need to probably check the voltage. So what we need to do is cut it right here. I'm gonna have all of these little cables and this is the ground shield. All right, and then you're gonna have this aluminum foil stuff and you pull it off and you're gonna get four wires. So you have um, Christmas colors and then a black. So what you need to do is we need to take the red one and the black one and separate it from the, the white and the green. The white and the green are data signal cables. So just cut those off right there. And then this is just for strength, integrity. So just cut this little rope off. And now you're just gonna have the ground shielding cable and then the red and the black. But in this instance, we really don't need it. So we can cut it off. So all you have is a red and a black. And so what we want to do is we want to connect it to these. And remember that the knotted one was red, so we want to connect these two wires. And then the black one is going to be the other one, obviously. And that's it. We need to connect these, and that's all we need to do. Before we connect this directly to these, we want to make sure that this is 5 volts, just to be on the safe side, and to make sure that the red is the red and the black is the black. So I have a little USB drive here, and you plug it in like this, and then you put the red on the red wire, the black on the black, and guess what? We have 5 volts, so that's perfect. And there's no negative sign, so that means that the polarity is true and correct. So all we have to do is, like I said, connect the red to the red and the black to the black. Um, you can use crimp terminals, but this, these are really tiny wires and I just tried it and it wasn't really holding. I don't have the proper tool for really tiny stuff and these are not good for this small of wire. This wire is very tiny. So what I'm going to do is simply connect it with solder. Then we're gonna heat up a soldering iron and put a little dab of solder on there. 
So wait until the soldering iron gets hot and then tin the tip. That means add a little bit of solder to just the tip of the soldering iron and then stick the soldering on it. Make sure that it's hot enough before you add solder. Right now I'm just rushing it. So the solder's on there but you have to wait till it gets nice and shiny and it wants to like and it will suck inside the wire and then you're done. See how that looks? That's a proper solder connection. And then this one, get it really hot and then put a little drop of solder right on it. Come on. And that's all you need. That's it. So the next step is to put the heat shrink over each wire so it covers it entirely. All of the work that we did with the solder. And then we just stick it over a fire for just a couple seconds. And almost there, almost there. Ta-da! It's all done. So idealistically, what you want to do is you want to plug it into the power supply, like I just did. And then you take this plug and you check the polarity and the voltage before you plug it in. That is so very important. But for me right now, I cannot do it because this little thing is too tiny for this to fit in and I can't get a reading. So I'm just going to have to check the wires again and make sure that, okay, these lines mean positive and it's going to the positive. So yes, this should work just fine. Now the moment of truth. I will plug it in to the little uh, appliance. And it turns on. So that means that I actually did it right. Sometimes if, if you reverse these two wires, this will go up in smoke like I said. But um, now I'm going to sit here and actually mess with this and uh, get it all set up. But I hope you guys learned a lot from this little tutorial. Um, this can be kind of scary, but once you know how to do it, you can hook up almost anything to your solar system. So I hope you guys like this tutorial. Let me know if you have any more questions on other tutorials that you would like to see. And let me know if there was something that didn't make sense in this video tutorial. Um, thank you so much for watching, and I'll talk to you later. Also, check out my new book, Mobile Solar Power Made Easy. People are loving it, and I'm selling a lot of copies. I am absolutely amazed at what's going on. So, uh, yeah, it's number one new release still for like over a week. So, I'll talk to you guys later, and thanks for watching. See ya.